off the press bar. And we welcome you to Basalone Field in Bridgewater, New Jersey, site of tonight's New Jersey high school football matchup between Hunterdon Central and Bridgewater Raritan. Glad to have you with us on this beautiful Friday night for football alongside my partner, Jim Johnson. I'm Jimmy Sullivan. And Jim, this Hunterdon Central side opened with a 44-21 loss last weekend to Hillsborough. Got down in that game early, started their season 0-1. They're looking to bounce back here early in their 2021 season. They are a tough start, Jimmy, a real tough start. Uh, game got to 30 to nothing in the second quarter. That's when you wonder if the t kids can hang their heads. It was a rough season last year and not the season that Coach Ransone wanted. However, as we talked to Coach Ransone in pregame on the field, he says the kids are very confident. There's no problems at all. The positives are all there. They liked a lot of things they did see. And they did make this game competitive in the second half. Final was 44-21. So uh, hopefully good things. They can kind of build off that and see what happens tonight. But this is a tough opponent in Bridgewater. His two teams did not play in the condensed season last year. Played a barn burner of a game a couple of years back here in central New Jersey. 100 and Central won the toss. They elected to receive. Trevor Fish is back at about his own goal line. It'll be Sam Valera, one of the heroes last week for Bridgewater Raritan. They won on a last second 21 yard field goal. Valera sends it away. It's a short kick towards the sideline. Fielded at about the 20 by one of the up men and surging forward past the 25 yard line, carrying a pile close to the 30. And that is where 100 and Central will begin their evening. Well, Frank Lentenny will bring the offense out in the field, Jimmy. It's his second year as varsity quarterback for the Red Devils. And uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of good things expected. The danger here for Central, of course, in the offseason, they lost their entire offensive line from last year. A lot of new faces, but a lot of, a lot of positives in the skilled position department. So let's see what happens tonight. Well, and Tenney, the senior, committed to Stony Brook for lacrosse. His head coach, Casey Ransone, also one of his coaches on the lacrosse team, knows this youngster very well. First play will be a handoff to the running back, Julio Marsiglia, and he surges forward past the 35 on the first carry of the game. Mark him down at the 37, a gain of seven on first down. And a flag is down on the far side of the field. It'll be on Hunter and Central. Looks to be an illegal formation, so that'll knock them back five yards. Boy, you hate to see that right from the outset, Jimmy. Again, Central wants to make that statement early. It goes without saying, right? You want to play well at the beginning. But the way things went last week, the 30 nothing deficit in the second quarter, Central really sort of wants to uh, put a little stamp in a positive way in this game and not the way to start it up. 100 and Central winless last season, lost their season opener this year. The last win, you got to go back to 2019 for that. So it'll be first and 15. Penalty was an illegal formation. It was not indicated who it was on. So the seven-yard Marsiglia run wiped off the board, and Lentenny goes back to work on a first and 15. They put a lot of trust in this senior quarterback, 6'2", 190 pounds. As the sun sets here at Basilone Field, man in motion, they'll give it to Marsiglia again. He's stacked up in the backfield. Lost a couple on first down, a couple of 
Panthers defenders in on the stop, and it's second and long. Julio Marsigli is a kid I talked to in the preseason, Jimmy, and uh, he was just excited about the opportunity to play for 100 and Central. Genuinely enthusiasm about the responsibility involved to play for the Red Devils. So I'd really like to see him uh, kind of get going this year. Well, they've given it to Marsiglia twice. One of those plays did not count. The other went for a loss of one. Second down and 16, low snap. It'll be a screen pass to Owen Bill, and he's stacked up on the outside. Knocked down at the 20 yard line. Dylan Corsi made the stop. And they get it into the hands of Bill, the highly touted senior wideout, but he suffers a loss of about three. And Owen Bill is uh, one of the one of the skill position guys that the Central needs to uh, to deliver. Not a position for him to succeed, but Owen Bill is certainly one of the stars of this team. Bill getting looks from a few college programs. He's a handful defensively. Hard for a corner or a linebacker to guard him. Lantenny well, drops back. It's third and 19. Got a roll out. Can't escape for long. Dropped on third and long. It's a quick three and out for Hunter and Central. Ryan Schweitzer was the first man there for Bridgewater Raritan. Well, going backwards, not what Coach Ransone and the Red Devils wanted to get going in, in the uh, on this first possession. Bridgewater set up for some real good field position. And, uh, you know, you touched upon a, a, the central Bridgewater game from two years ago. They didn't play last year during the pandemic, but the ultimate heartbreaker mm. for the central faithful. Central trail 23-20, to 20, final seconds of the game. It looked like they punched one in the end zone, and there was a fumble. Game did, uh, fumble, ball went over to Central, uh, to Bridgewater. Game was over. It was a stunning, stunning loss. Coach Ransone, certainly the, the, the toughest loss of his five-year career here at Central. So there was a discussion amongst the officials. Clock frozen at 9.23 in this first quarter. So we get a delay of game on 100 and Central. So. Well, the offense is still on the field. Okay. Now let's see. Frankie Lenteni is still behind center, as you said, Jim. So it leads me to believe there must have been a dead ball foul before that last play. So third and 25. Some kind of dead ball call. So that play doesn't count, but still third and a long way for this 100 and central offense. Lentenny drops back. It's a short throw caught by Bill. Gets across the 25, and it'll be fourth down. So some positive action for the Red Devils on third and long, but not nearly enough to get the first, and that will send the punt unit on. Gives a little more breathing room from Central, though. Uh, you know, they're out to the 27-yard line, so hopefully we can get a good boom, get this game going, and uh, defense, hey, fingers crossed, it goes a little better than the start last week. Got down 30 to nothing in that second quarter. Owen Bill back to punt for 100 in Central, and Antoine Hinton is the return man for the Panthers. As Bill sends it away, high punt, not very deep. Hinton will let it bounce. It bounces out of bounds at about the 46-yard line of Bridgewater Rarity. They'll mark it up at the 49, and that is where the Panthers' offense will get started, led by... Brady Curdela, the senior quarterback. So Curdela is a, a kid who's, uh, like Lenteni, will play Division I soccer next mm. year. He is an elite, so or excuse me, lacrosse. I'm sorry, a lacrosse player, an elite lacrosse player. He's going to be at Rutgers next year. So Brady Curdela, uh, this is his second job, so to speak. And he's a pretty darn good quarterback, too. Throws a screen pass. It's Matthew Masilek moving up the middle of the field. Gets a decent gain on first down. Knocked down at the 45 with a gain of six. So Michaelik makes the play. And Kurtula, as you said, a four-star lacrosse recruit, according to a couple of the websites who track that stuff. And as you said, if this is his second job, 
pretty darn good at it, and you wouldn't know. I'm not, I'm not so good at my first job, Jimmy, so. <laughs> it's a run to the outside, and there's room for Evan Goldberg with a first down and a gain of 10. Evan Goldberg on the carry. Goldberg chalked up 65 yards last week in the uh, in the opener for for uh, the Panthers. So they certainly uh, will rely on him a lot on the offense. Average about five yards a carry last week. 13 carries, 65 yards. They threw it 22 times with Curtila. He completed 50% of his throws in that win over Sayreville. Be another one for Goldberg. He's got room, bounces it outside, stiff arms a man, and carries him forward. Close to a first down. It's a gain of 11, and he moves the sticks yet again. An efficient start for Bridgewater, for sure. Again, uh, don't want to accentuate the negatives here from the 100 and Central side, but got it. Someone, let's hope, can step up and make some plays defensively because. Uh, you got to be a little leery of what happened last week. Now, Coach did say Hillsborough's probably the toughest, the strongest team they'll face all year, but Bridgewater's pretty good, too. So run to the outside. Curtila bounces off one tackler, bounces off another, and gets another good gain. He broke two or three tackles on that run, and a gain of six on first down for the senior Brady Curtila, 6'2", 205 pounds. They're going to call that seven on the play. So Cordilla, uh, a pretty good runner too, Jimmy. I think he threw for 160 yards last week in the opener, but also ran for quite a bit. He's an athlete. You know, a Division One lacrosse player is going to be an athlete. Obviously, it translates to football. He's got his brother Colin Cordilla in the formation. High snap to give to Hinton up the middle. The speed back spins around and is down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal. Well, as we can see, Jimmy, there's some holes in that uh, in that line that uh, Central's had to try to uh, try to fill. He hasn't been filling too fast. This is a nice, efficient run of drive. They haven't had to throw the ball. No need to. Just one throw on this drive. Another give to hit. Bouncing around, spins down inside the five. Marked down at the four. A gain of six on first down. Brito made the stop at second and goal. Mateo Brito, his brother Sal, uh, graduated last year from Central, was, uh, was the captain of the team. He's playing at Ithaca College this year, was the heart and soul of the Red Devils team the past couple of years. Now it's Mateo's turn to step into the limelight. Southern Central team looking for a stop inside the five. Hand off up the middle, no, it's a keep. Running it to the outside, Cordilla's got a touchdown. Kept it on the read, bounced it outside, and an early six for the Panthers. Five thirty-five to go, first quarter. Bridgewater six hundred and central, nothing. Well, they'll try for the point here, uh, Jimmy. But again, not to, to say the least, not the way. Uh, Coach Ransone and crew were hoping this one was going to get started. Salvalera's kick is good. And so that makes it 7 nothing Panthers. 5.35 to go first quarter. And Jim, you said it, just not the start. Hunter and Central wanted to go backwards on offense and defensively unable to stop this dual threat quarterback, Brady Cordilla for Bridgewater. He did it on the ground. He got it done through the air. An early 7 nothing lead for Bridgewater Raritan. Just over halfway through this first quarter on a picture-perfect night for football here in Central New Jersey. There you see Casey Ransone, head coach of 100 and Central. We talked to him before the game. He said, look, this team's confident. They're not hanging their heads. Tough result last week with the almost over three touchdown loss, I should say, to Hillsborough. But nonetheless, he says his team is confident. They feel good about what they've done during the week. Hey, so guys like you and I watch, watch a lot of football, Jimmy. So of watching the uh, my beloved the Fighting Irish on Sunday <laughs> night, looked like Notre Dame was just going to just stick it to Florida State. One big play kind of got the Seminoles right back in it, turned this around. Boy, does Central need that big play. 
for sure. Another high short kick. Be fielded by Gavin Steger at the 15 yard line near the sidelines. And he bounces outside. He's got room. Spins down near the 35. There will be good starting field position for Hunter and Central. They struggled on their last drive, whether it was penalties, negative plays, sacks. Befell them and route to a three and out to start the game. So they'll try to make a little more progress here. Stager marked down at the 34. So Lenteni and company will take the field. Let's see, can they open it up? And as you said, can they get that big play? You were talking about to try to turn this game around. Marsiglia in the backfield for the Red Devils. It's a fake handoff, looking over the middle. Now he's going to throw the screen out to Trevor Fish. Makes a man miss, cutting it up the sideline. So he'll have a gain of about five. Trevor Fish, five foot seven, 160 pounds. He's just a kid who knows how to run routes. He's not the fastest kid in the world either, but he's just a dependable receiver and maybe Lentini's favorite target. Much in the vein of a Wes Welker, Julian Edelman type of receiver, undersized, sure, but sure-handed, doesn't drop a lot of balls, good route runner. Type See, of guy I used that to call every him, I call him Wayne yeah. Krabat, but, <laughs> but he didn't know who Wayne Krabat was, so, uh, so we better update that a little bit. Fake handoff, Marsiglia. Throw back to the outside to Fish. Had the first down, went backwards, and we'll see where they spot it. And he spins out of a tackle, gets the first down after all. Trevor Fish, tough running to the 45, and he moves the sticks. Well, you can't put a, uh, a barometer on toughness. Trevor Fish is one tough kid. Again, he's uh, not, not the kid with a big size, but he's tough, knows what he's doing out there, and uh, got a nice first down there for Central. So two catches on this drive for Trevor Fish. Both of which went for about six yards. Looking, screen pass, Owen Bill stacked up, lost the ball, and back the other way. It's an incomplete pass. Bill did not have possession of it before Dylan Corsi knocked it out. Boy, Corsi, nice hard shot there. He stuck it to Owen on that one. And uh, break for the Red Devils that it was not a fumble. But it, indeed, that looked like the right call. He never had possession. We're just seeing it again now on our monitor. And Bill did not make the quote-unquote football move. Right. So that is an incomplete pass. Lentenny looking for the play. See more of the RPO game for the Red Devils here on this drive. Takes the snap. This will be a give up the middle. And busting through inside the 40. Julio Marsiglia carrying a defender down inside the 35. Hey, there's that big play we talked about. The big play the Red Devils sort of need to kind of get things going. And that's, again, Julio Marsiglia, a kid who's really happy to be here this opportunity his senior year. Whistle and a flag before... The Red Devils got that play off. It's a false start. So some momentum, though, for Hunter and Central, despite the penalty. Marsiglia with some tough running there. And this offensive line, which is kind of inexperienced coming into the season, created a nice hole for Marsiglia. And they've been getting to the second level tonight. And there's just another example. So there's an in on four minutes to go in the first quarter. 7-0 ball game, Bridgewater on top. First and 15 for the Red Devils. Bill is in motion. He takes the push pass, trying to bounce outside. Breaks off one tackler, surges forward. Got back to the line of scrimmage, but no gain on first and long. Antoine Hinton made the stop. So we talked a little bit about the, the run pass uh, RPO offense that 
Coach Lester Erb has brought here. Lester Erb is a, a volunteer assistant coach here at Central. What a decorated resume he has. Spent a couple years with the Baltimore Ravens, but many years with the Iowa Hawkeyes and then Nevada and then Rutgers. So you talk about just a, someone with a wealth of knowledge here to uh, instill on some high school players. Central is very fortunate to have Coach Erb you know, up above this year watching things. Screen pass to Fish, gets a couple. Tackle made on the play by Matthew Machalek. It's third and long, and Lester Herb, as you were saying, wealth of experience, do spend, spend some time in the NFL now. A volunteer assistant, Casey Ransone said, it's rubbing off on not just Frankie Lenteni, but some of the skill position guys, the whole offense learning a lot from Lester's experience and wealth of knowledge. Third and 13. And Tenney drops back, looks short, has Marsiglia. Got a long way to go and he won't get there. Down at the 33, a gain of three. And we'll see if Central leaves its offense on the field for fourth and about 10. Yeah, I think they're in no man's land here, Jimmy. I don't think a punt is really going to be all that productive. Uh, hey, fourth and ten, let's go for it. See what they have up their sleeves, the Red Devils. They've got three receivers. Marsiglia in the backfield. The Panthers are going to pin their ears back. Big play early on in this one. Lenteni looks. Going deep down the middle, incomplete. It was over the head of Fish in the area of Connor Gray. And it's a turnover on downs for Hunter and Central. All right, well, there were a lot of positives out of that drive for sure. Uh, Central got a couple big plays, a nice, nice run there by Marsiglia. So hopefully that'll kind of get things going. And, you know, I can't help but to wonder, and Coach said that the team has seemed very confident, but you can't help but wonder. They're sure. high school kids. You fall behind big last week, coming off a tough season last year, and then there's a quick touchdown tonight. You really wonder about confidence. I can't help but to think, hey, let's keep, let's stay in this game. Let's let's get this confidence going. Cordilla looking deep, got a man, and it is hauled in. It's his brother Cole Cordilla, and he is gone. Touchdown Panthers. 67 yards, Brady to Cole, and a 13-0 lead for Bridgewater. Well, Jimmy, what was I saying about confidence? Yep. Oh. Boy, talk about dialing up a play right away and getting your team going. Cordillo, beautiful throw, but his man was wide open. So, uh, gosh, let's uh, let's hope it's not a redo from last week. Actually, a bit of an underthrow to Colin Cordillo, but nonetheless, a long touchdown pass, low snap. Valera's extra point is up and through. 14 nothing, Bridgewater. 67 yards for Colin Cordilla, his first touchdown catch of the year. For Brady Cordilla, his first touchdown pass of the season. And another early deficit for Hunter and Central, and you were talking about the confidence, but again, as you said, can't help but wonder about you know, a bunch of kids who uh, experienced this last week and who are experiencing it yet again to start their season. Certainly not the start they wanted here today. And Coach mentions that they got to they got to perform on the field. They got to put the plays together. A tough way to start the season. There's no excuses. 100 Central, big school. They got to play the big boys. Tough start to the year. Going to Hillsboro, going to Bridgewater, and then the home opener next week. Da da, Phillipsburg. Mm. Maybe the the best of the bunch traditionally. So it's a tough way for Central to start this one. But hey, they've got to make the plays. They've got to figure out a way to uh, kind of stop this trend at this point. Well, if there is an upshot for Central, is that their offense is going to get to be right back on the field. And a one-play drive for the Panthers, and Hunter and Central get another crack at it. Trevor Fish needs to receive Sam Valera to kick the ball. Sam Valera will kick it off. Central was down 30 to nothing in the second quarter last week, down 14 nothing. Here this way. Low kick will be fielded by Owen Bill inside his own 10. 
Trying to bounce it outside. Got some room to run. Cuts it back inside and surges forward to the 25. So that's where Frankie Lenteni and the Red Devils offense will get things started. So again, from the central uh, point of view, you just got to, hey, start fresh. This is what it is. It's 14 nothing, but the game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. You got to stop the bleeding here. You got to get an offensive drive together, right, Jimmy? They've got to get sure. something going and get, get some points on the board. That's, uh, that's the name of the game. Got an enemy territory last possession. Couldn't convert a fourth down and 10. Now Lenteni. Looks to build on that momentum here for the Red Devils. Minute 24 to go here in the first. He'll throw it outside, has his man Bill, and that's a gain of about nine. Nice gainer there in first time for Owen Bill. Uh, again, Owen Bill. Owen Bill is a guy there. It's going to have to be a, a part of a lot of what good things to happen, four good things to happen for Central, and that's a nice quick hitter right there. Bill has been the go-to target along with Trevor Fish tonight for Frankie Lantenny. Seeing that RPO game that the Red Devils offense favors. This will be a handoff to Marsiglia, and he's stacked up right around the marker. And he'll be just short. It'll be third down and about a foot as we head down towards the end of this first quarter. 30 seconds to go. Our in Central could run another play here. Mar don't want to uh, dramatize this, but boy, they could use a first down right here. It is a pivotal point in the game, even though it's early. Inside of 10 seconds to go, first quarter. Give to Marsiglia. He's got the first down and more. Bouncing it outside at the 40. Breaks another tackle. He's up to the 45 with a gain of 10. And a first down, and that'll end the first quarter. Couple of touchdowns for Bridgewater. One on the ground, one through the air for Brady Curdilla. After 12 minutes of play, 14-0 Bridgewater. We'll be back for the second quarter after this. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, something that's in common for all of us here, uh, Jimmy. Sure. You and I are graduates yes. of Fordham. And last week, our, uh, our team, the Fordham Rams, played out in Nebraska, which mm. was an interesting matchup for Fordham to be able to take part of. But where this all ties into from a 100 and Central perspective, Ryan Joyce, offensive tackle at Central, now a guard at Fordham University, found himself in the starting lineup at Alumni Field in Lincoln, Nebraska last week in his sophomore year, so a big thrill. I talked to his brother, Connell Joyce, on uh, before the game. Connell's a uh, volunteer assistant here with the Red Devils and a former Red Devil player himself. And Connell and his dad went out and they said they had the time of his life and and Ryan's first two quarters that were clearly the highlight of his football career. <laughs> I can just imagine going from, a, you know, from 100 and Central, a large school, a high school, to Fordham University, a, an FCS team, and then you find yourself playing at Nebraska. Very cool experience for Ryan. Nebraska, one of those destination stadiums for any college football fan, any college football player. I know Fordham went in there wanting maybe a better result, wanting to win, but can't beat getting to play, as you said, in Lincoln, Nebraska, in front of a sellout crowd. Fair number of Fordham fans there as well. I was so I hear, that. yeah, including the Joyce's. The Joyce is certainly among them. Good looking Fordham squad this year. We'll see how they do in the Patriot League. And off to Marsiglia. He'll get a couple on first down. I did have a couple of my alumni friends asking me a couple months ago, hey, do you want to make the trip out? And I'll be honest, Jimmy, I want to go to a game in Lincoln. Yeah. But I want to watch him play a real opponent. No disrespect to Fordham, <laughs> but you understand what I mean. A big ten opponent. That's for exactly sure. yeah. right. Big year for Nebraska, too. They've kind of fallen on hard times the last couple as, of years. Yes, they have. They needed Fordham. Yeah. Scott Frost yep. seems to be on the hot seat in year four in Lincoln. But they're in need of uh, some wins as well. Fordham, though, on the up and up. Ryan Joyce right in the thick of it. Lenteni drops to throw. Looks over the middle. Nice catch by Owen Bill. Breaks the tackle at the 30. Bounces it outside, and he is gone. Touchdown, Central. 
Well, there we go. Uh, we just talked about that earlier, how that one big play, Jimmy can do it. And there you go. That's what you call a big play. And Owen Bill's the big playmaker for Central. So talk about a team that just desperately needed a play like that. They got it at a perfect time. 53 yards, Lenteni to Owen Bill. And just like that, the Red Devils back in it as they try to make this a seven-point game. I'd like to think it was our conversation at Fordham that brought <laughs> some good karma the Red Devils way. Hey, we can do it again. <laughs> Brian Colodi on to kick the extra point. Brian Colodi in to attempt the extra point. Colodi's kick is up, and it is good. Well, that was a response for the Red Devils. It was the senior Lenteni finding the senior Bill for a 53-yard connection. And just like that, as you said, Jim, they needed that one big play. They're right back in it. And I think a lot can be said about momentum for a team like Hunter and Central that's gotten off to a little bit of a tough start. And I guess you could see that belief starting to come back here and what turns into kind of a big possession here is they try to maintain that momentum, keep the Panthers off the board. And as we talk about Owen Bill, Owen's dad, Tom Bill, Red Devil assistant coach, probably the best player in 100 and Central high school history. You know, these kind of things are debatable going back many years. But Tom Bill certainly in the, in the conversation of the final two, played for Joe Paterno at Penn State, and has been an assistant here at, at uh, Central for several years. Had to be proud of, of his son in that time. Although knowing Coach Bill and how loud Coach Bill can get, he didn't exactly celebrate right away, but I'm sure he's very happy to see uh, Owen get that touchdown. Another big play for Owen Bill. Anthony Hinton. And Anthony Confalone back to receive for the Panthers. It'll be a high kick, not deep towards the sideline. It'll be fielded by Confalone ahead of the 25 and spun down at about the 30. Well, Jimmy, it's the ultimate game of emotion football, probably more than any other sport out there. And here we go. Now let's see what central defense can do off this. Uh, Bridgewater has had no trouble moving the ball. They did a methodical drive the first possession, and then boom, they went for the jugular in the second possession. One play, a long bomb. So now the defense is going to have to step up for Central, but guess what? If we can get a nice three and out here, a lot of things can change in a hurry. The longtime Bridgewater head coach Scott Bray calls the play in to Brady Curdilla. He's got two touchdowns tonight. One on the ground, one in the air. A touchdown pass, a 67-yarder to his brother, Colin. First and 10 for the Panthers, their own 29-yard line, and we have a whistle. One thing I don't think we got into yet, Jimmy, the obvious, the weather. Is, yeah. this, oh. is this one of the most, the perfect day of, uh, of 2021 with all the heat you and know, all the I, excessive rain? I was driving rain? in here, and I thought, this is the first taste to fall. Yeah. September 10th, perfect weather. Yep, perfect night, perfect night to be out there, no question. Could not be a better night, no threat of rain, little wind. And these two teams going at it here on a Friday night. Nothing better. This will be a handoff to Goldberg, bounces it outside, didn't see anything he liked, so he cuts it back, and he'll gain about five. And uh, then nice there's down, a nice run on first down for Evan Goldberg. And Jimmy, there's just the little things too about high school football this year that you just you know have to appreciate the fact that we have a full house here yes. at Bridgewater. For the, for the most part, a nice crowd. Certainly more so than the limited 500 uh, spectators we had to have last year. The, the students are going to play a full season. Certainly appears that way for both schools. So there's a lot of uptick, a lot more enthusiasm around. Last year was just crazy for all parties involved. You never know who is going to be eligible to play with COVID. A little flip up the middle. It's still in Corsi. Drag down, close to a first down. Late flag on the end of the play. That was Matthew Bradis, I beg your pardon. We'll check the flag as he was taken down right at the line to gain. But, you know, you, you brought up uh, the fans and, and how many of them are here, and I, I look back on it. I'm not sure how we did last year, you know, with... With, uh, there, was a, there were a couple of nutty games yeah. in this region. Hillsborough High School had to play a game 
and then play another game two days later. Yeah. It was just madness yeah. and uh, things you'd never see before and let's hope never see again. It's what they had to do just to get the, uh, just to get the season completed. And certainly nothing compared to the uh, hardship that a lot of people have gone through, but nonetheless, good to see things back to some semblance of normal band back here tonight. That was a face mask on Hunter and Central. So Panthers at the Red Devils 41. A give up the middle to Goldberg. He bounces it outside. They've had a hard time getting him down. And he gains about two. Boy, he is so hard to get a handle on. Evan Goldberg, the senior running back for Bridgewater. Yeah, Bridgewater's got a nice array of weapons. There's no question about it. This is a nice team that the, the Red Devils are going up against again. Goldberg, or excuse me, Dylan Corsi lost his lid, so he'll come out for a play. And Antoine Hitton will replace him. Inside of 10 minutes to go in the first half. 14-7 our score. Bridgewater on top, 100 in central. Dropping back, throwing deep. Got a man again, and it's Colin Cordilla again. Dragging the defender down, touchdown Panthers. Second Cordilla connection of the night, and Bridgewater strikes right back. Oh boy, Jimmy, it's just uh, more of the same. They, they just can't seem to stop Bridgewater at all. Very similar to last week's game. They just could not stop Hillsborough in the early going. Again, they're going to have to try to play uh, a back-and-forth game at this point, but it's uh, that's hard for Central to do. This Bridgewater offense as explosive as they come. Sam Valera's extra point makes it 21-7 with 9.25 to go here in the first half. Well, Central got some momentum off that big touchdown pass to Owen Bill. But Bridgewater claims it right back. A 39-yard pass from Brady Cordilla to his brother Colin Cordilla makes it a two-touchdown game yet again. Well, we, well, now we get back to the whole confidence thing again. It's defensively the Red Devils' confidence. You hate to use the term shot, but it can't be good right now. That's three possessions, three relatively easy scores. So, uh, you know, some, someone's going to have to step up. It's the proverbial cliche, make a big play, but they're really going to need to make a stop. And certainly the 15-yard penalty there only made things worse. Well, turning into a bit of a shootout here at Bazelone Field. Well, the, the Red Devils can only hope it's a shootout yes. right now. Shootout certainly implying both parties involved. Valera kicks it off. This will head back to the five. Trevor Fish will bring it out. Tries to bounce it outside through a pile. And take it down shy of the 25. So it'll be first and 10 for 100 and Central. And Frankie Lentenny off that touchdown pass to Bill. Has to go out there and do it again. And coming up at halftime here on the live stream, we have a preview of all our 100 and Central fall sports. Everyone pretty much underway right now. Uh, both boys and girls soccer teams got off on to a winning start on Wednesday as they uh, both beat Franklin High School in a doubleheader at Central. And the girls field hockey team also won its opener. And that'll be a false start. Look like Connor Gray moved. So bring it back five, first and 15. A number of penalties for Hunter and Central tonight. Yeah, exactly. That's, you know, that part is just frustrating to the coaches. They don't need <laughs> those kind of situations. Yeah. They're, they're struggling to, defensively, to say the least. Penalties only compound the problem. Well, the Spritzwater team hard enough to beat, but you give them freebies like that, the task becomes that much more difficult. Lentenny will keep it. He throws to Cole Gray, the backup tight end, and he's got a first down. Dragged down across the 35. Gain of 17. Well, the Red
Red Devils looking to apply a little bit of tempo here. As the chains get moved. It's been a multi-dimensional attack for the Red Devils tonight. Julio Marsigli has had some success running the ball. Frankie Lentenny has done a nice job throwing it. First down and 10. Marsiglia. Good, tough running and a gain of nine. Yeah, Jimmy, all things considered, the offenses look pretty good for Central. I mean, they really, after, after a, a, a sluggish start to this game, offensively, the Red Devils have really been putting this together. But boy, oh boy, they're going to have to uh, get something going defensively. Trevor Fish on the outside with a first down and more in the Panther territory. That's back to back to back first downs on this one. So a uh, nice little drive working here for Central. Three straight plays, three first downs. Out of bounds at the Panther 46. Third time that the Red Devils have been in enemy territory tonight. Almost full house here at Bazalone Field. The Stony Brook commit Len Tenney. Looks to throw outside. Dangerous throw, incomplete. Trevor Fish was blanketed by Colin Cordilla. Frank Lentenny such a smart kid. His uh, brother, former Red Devil player Tory Lentenny, is at MIT mm -hmm. playing lacrosse and football. Two sports in MIT. <laughs> and his sister goes to Cornell. So he's certainly in a, uh, in a uh, family tree of very, very smart kids. MIT, maybe not Ivy League, but close enough. Yeah, I think there might be a step above most Ivy Leagues. One of That's the elite point. schools in the country. There goes Marsiglia with a game of about three. I, I can at least spell MIT. That's true. I got that going for me. That's true. <laughs> be a third down and about eight. A 20 to go first half. And a 14-point game. Well, they've been spreading the wealth. There's a lot of skill position guys on Central, and they've all been making a, a Mike making plays tonight. Lantani rolls right, looking that way. He's going to take off with it, and did he get the first down? We'll see where they put it. Well, Tenney was looking to the right side, and it is a first down. The chains do move again, Jimmy. Another first down. Nice drive here by Central. Needed nice bounce eight. back. Needed eight, got nine. And there you see the scrambling ability of Lenteni. Didn't see anything he liked, so he took off with it. And now Hunter and Central in business. Another give to Marsiglia. He's got room up the middle. Another first down for Julio Marsiglia down inside the 25. The Panther players on their sideline wanted a penalty. Not sure what they saw, but it's a gain of 12 for Julio Marsiglia and a first down. And another stating the obvious, quite honestly, it's keeping our defense off the field. Yeah. And that's a good thing right now. Julio Marsiglia has been extraordinarily impressive tonight. He gets it again. And this time he's stacked up. Didn't have much on that play. Maybe a gain of one. So it'll be second and nine. 6.40 to go, second quarter. Sun is down. It's a Friday night. We've got high school football, nothing better. A whistle and a timeout taken by Hunterdon and Central. So they've got two remaining on the half. Panthers still have all three. So as mentioned earlier, the Red Devils will open up their home season next Friday night as they face the always strong Phillipsburg State Liners at Stewart Field. 
So come on out and enjoy some Red Devil football. It'll be glad to, uh, glad to have the kids back at home. And uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to be different than it was last year when there were just a limited number of fans could be there. Even the band was actually watching the game from field level so they could get a few more people with social distancing and all. So hopefully a lot of Red Devil fans will come out next Friday night. And let's hope the weather is as nice yeah. as it is tonight. Well, it's going to be hard to top this. Yes. Temperature is in the 60s. It's clear. No threat of rain. 100 in the Central's game last week uh, at Hillsborough. It was supposed to be played on Thursday night. Had to get pushed up back all the way to Saturday because of the remnants of Hurricane Ida coming through, dropping several inches of rain on this area. And we hope everyone's doing all right from that. So second down and nine for the Red Devils from the Panther 22. And Tenney throws far side, and it's incomplete. He's looking for Owen Bill. All right, big play time again for Central. It's been a really nice drive with uh, several Red Devils taking part. But here we go on third down. We uh, kind of think we're in four down territory here for Central. Down 14 points. And we've seen Len Tenney. His first option is to go to Owen Bill. And I'll have to throw for it almost assuredly here on third and nine. Drops back, throws a quick screen to Fish, trying to bounce it outside, get to the marker, he's short. Knocked out inside the 20. Spotted out of bounds at the 18. It'll be third down, uh, fourth down at about five. And let's see what the Red Devils decide to do. Marsiglia in the backfield. The Panthers trying to get another stop in their own territory. Fourth and five. Montenegro's going to roll it out. Looking around, back corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Trevor Fish. What a throw, what a catch. And 100 and Central responds again. Boy, as good of a throw that was uh, by Lentini. I think it was even a better catch by Trevor Fish. Just a diving play. Beautiful stop. Beautiful play by Trevor Fish. Really like the way this Red Devils offense is, uh, is clicking tonight after the opening drive. They've really come together. So many different guys are making the plays. Well, we talked about Fish before. They have a lot of trust in him. A sure-handed receiver doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And you saw it again there. A sure-handed play, a difficult catch but they make the connection. And now, the extra point from Brian Colodi is up, and it is good, and this is a seven-point game. The kick is good. Well, what a throw, what a catch. And just like that, 100 and Central right back in it. And you have to credit the resolve of this Red Devils team. Jim, they got the touchdown, gave one up, came right back downfield and got another one as Casey Ranzone is on the field arguing. Colodi got knocked over on that extra point. He wanted some kind of call, whether it would have been running into the kicker, roughing the kicker, but he didn't get it. But nonetheless, Jim, the nope. resolve of this Red Devil side, really impressive. Knowing Coach Paul Colodi, who's our strength and uh, conditioning coach at Harden Central, I'm almost surprised he's not <laughs> out giving the referee an earful. But uh, Coach Ranzone is hot. But yeah, back to the uh, back to the positives here. This is not last week's game. You know that was kind of the fear when I saw Bridgewater march down, score those two touchdowns. But the central offense has come back and really done a great job. Again, it's two it's a two way game. Defense has got to do something. But uh, you know the offense has certainly done its job. Hopefully the defense can make that one play, get that confidence, turn that momentum a little bit. So Hunter and Central kicks off again. Hinton and Confalone back to receive. And now the question is, can this defense get a stop? Bridgewater has moved it with no issue against the Red Devils so far tonight. 
Pelotis kick, high, short. Confalone fields at the 25. Bouncing it towards the middle and not much room. Sticking down at the 29. And that is where this high flying Bridgewater offense will take over. Three touchdowns tonight for Brady Cordilla. One on the ground, two on the air, both to his brother Colin. And I have to imagine there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on number 88 in black trying to stop him on this drive. Well, Central certainly knows who the weapons are at this point because the weapons have been executing for the Panthers. There's been no surprises here. Bridgewater's, you know, played to its strength. High snap. They give it to Evan Goldberg. He's chased down from behind. Vinny Burrito made the stop. It'll be a loss of one. Nice play there by Brito, make, knocking Goldberg down in the backfield. So, hey, let's hope this is uh, the way they can kind of get something going. A one-yard loss, second and 11. Impressive pursuit. High snap kind of threw that play off from the jump. Hunter and Central looking for a stop any which way they can get it. Back to throw Cordilla, looking deep again. Throws it over the middle, has a man that's uh. dropped. Colin Cordillo was wide open at the 40 and couldn't make the catch. Nothing better than a little bit of luck. The, the, uh, always the X factor in sports, uh, Jimmy, and that was right there because uh, Colin Cordillo was wide open over the middle, a certain first down. Always better to be lucky than good. It's good to have a good combination, but sometimes a little more luck is better. 100 Central will take it, third and long, and a chance to get off the field. 5.29 to go, second quarter. One score again. Cordilla back to throw, rolling out, bouncing around. Boy, he does this time. better than anybody. Flag is down. He's going to throw it over the middle. He's got a man short of the first down. It's caught by Dylan Corsi at the 35. We'll check the flag. He had all the time to throw. Let's see what this flag is. It's in the area of holding. And that's what it is. Almost made sense. He, he had the 15 seconds to throw that time. So uh, no doubt the Red Devils will decline that penalty because it's fourth down and I shouldn't say no doubt, but it's fourth and five in their own territory. I wouldn't think Bridgewater would be going for it. So, uh, so yes, the Red Devils do indeed uh, decline the penalty. So it is fourth down. So we got a whistle and a timeout. Panthers want to talk it over. They use their first timeout here in the first so half. Did we see after the, the start of this game, Jimmy, a, a point where Central would be in a position to maybe drive down and tie it? Well, I'm not going to lie, I didn't. The way just the way yeah. things have been going, but it's just they got that offense going. It's it's clicking. It's going great right but now. But give Central credit. You know, in the, in the last couple of years, they've played some close games. They've had some competitive games. That, They've had some tough losses, and look, no doubt some games that have gotten away from them early, and it looked early on like this was maybe going to be a game that got away from them as well, and here they are, fourth and five, looks like it's going to be a punt, and a little over five minutes to go, an offense that's firing on all cylinders so far tonight. All told, going up against a team like Bridgewater, I think you like where you stand if you're Herndon Central. Absolutely. They finally got that defensive stop on that possession. And offensively, as you mentioned, they look great. It's all a game of confidence. And uh, that offense certainly has to have a lot of confidence right now. Well, hold the telephone because the offense for Bridgewater has taken the field on a fourth and five in their own territory. Hmm. Brady Cordilla has Evan Goldberg in the backfield. I'm going to say they're going to try to draw the Red Devils offside. I, I can't believe they'd be going for it. But you never know. That's what they're doing. They're trying to draw them off sides. They almost got it there. Nobody's moving on that side. Chess match continues. And a whistle. So that's a delay game. Hard count didn't work. 
fourth and ten. And now Salvalera takes the field to punt. A little surprised the uh, Panthers just didn't take a timeout there rather than cough up the, uh, the five yards. But um, at any event, uh, never really never really fault that play because in high school you can get a lot of kids that are just trying to be too aggressive, make plays, and uh, certainly not crazy to, to try to draw somebody offside there. So Valera, the punt, it's high and it's over his head. Valera back to field it toward his own end zone. Can he make anything of this? He boots it away, a very high, very short kick, and it's fielded by a Red Devil inside the 10. Jimmy, that is the, uh, the ultimate no-no in the special teams book. I think the coaches just tell you, get that ball and run out of the end zone, take the, take the knee, whatever. Do not try to make a miracle punt out of the end zone. So as a result, instead of just a two-point safety, which wouldn't have certainly been an, an, uh, a, a fault of the punter, the, the snap was way over his head, now the Red Devils have a chance to punch this one in. Golden opportunity. So inside the 10, first and goal for the Red Devil offense. Wow. How about that turn of events? Wouldn't this be something? It would be something. This game has really turned. What a half we have had. And a fumble by Lenteni, and he has to dive on it. But smart that he did. You know, the ball's loose there. It's only first down play. Just fall on it. Let's make something happen here. So they lost a couple on that one. Second down and goal. Back at their own 12. And now the Panther defense back on their heels. It'll be big for them to get a stop. Another wayward snap. Marsiglia trying to bounce it outside and just not much room. Maybe got a yard. But a couple of Panther defenders there on the stop, including Ryan Luis. Now we, down start, 11. now we start to think, is this four down territory for Central? Um, kind of thinking at this point, well, let's see what happens on third down, of course. But uh, now, This play will definitely tell you a if, lot if, about how they're thinking. Correct. If they throw it short of the sticks, then you think that the offense is staying on the field. But yep. that's to be determined between now and then. Lentenny rolling right, looking around, gonna run, cuts it back inside the five, stacked up at the three. And now the intrigue, do you go for it from there, inside the five, ball sitting at the far hash, so it wouldn't necessarily be an easy kick. Yeah. I think they're gonna keep the offense on the field. I think they're gonna keep the offense on the field for a couple reasons, yeah, they're inside the five and it's on the far hash. Three yards to it. get. Fourth and goal. Pivotal point in this one. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. Crowd making a racket. Lenteni looks, throws. Bill wasn't looking for it. And another turnover on down. A little miscommunication between quarterback and wideout. And the Panthers defense with a critical stop inside their own five. That was a big stop for Bridgewater. Central had first and goal at the seven after that thwarted punt attempt. And they lived to tell about it. So uh, brilliant, brilliant stretch there by the Panther defense after, after Central's offense had really had its way the last two possessions. Great job by Bridgewater. Well, we have had just about everything in this first half. We've had long touchdowns. We've had botched snaps. We've had, we've had the special teams Bridgewater issues. Bridgewater band playing my Sharona <laughs> and Tequila. Evan Goldberg on the run, gets across the five, gives his offense a little more room with a gain of five. Two and a half minutes to go, second quarter. 
Each team has two timeouts. No matter how they go in a halftime, though, I think you've seen a lot out of 100 and Central in this first half. Tough matchup coming into this game. They've acquitted themselves quite well. It's Goldberg again, bouncing it outside. He's got some room. Close to first down yardage. Knocks down at the 13, and they've given it to him. We've got a whistle. And it looks to be a player down for the Panthers. I will check on that. Clock stops, 2.05 to go second quarter. So I think from a Bridgewater standpoint right now, they'd probably just be happy to uh, move this ball downfield and, and get out with a seven-point lead. Of course, you make a big play. You're, you know, you're knocking on the door again. Central, of course, would want to get something going. And uh, so it's three and two on timeouts, right? Okay, I got two and two. Yeah. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah, I believe each team still has two. Okay. And this okay. injury won't count against the ledger for... Bridgewater. Okay. Okay, we're trying to figure out who it is. We're not going to speculate. It's very difficult from our position to make out a number. Well, yeah, back back to the strategy here for Central. Yeah, if you can, you can get another stop here, get the ball back in good field position with a couple of timeouts, they can make something happen for sure. Bridgewater does get the ball out of the half. Hundred and Central received the opening kickoff. And we thank you for joining us. Our first broadcast of the 2021 season. First football broadcast, yes, indeed. Uh, but the Red Devils uh, Athletics, we had the soccer games on Wednesday. And we have a busy week at Hundred and Central next week. We have girls soccer on Monday against, I believe they're playing... Uh, Roxbury High School, and then the boys play top-ranked Pingree at home on Tuesday. That will That's be a big one. Uh, that'll be a tough one. Coach uh, Anson Smith's uh, boys will have their hands full with with Pingree coming in, and then we have our first broadcast of Hundred and Central gymnastics on Wednesday. Always, uh, always an interesting uh, sport to watch as the girls take part in four different uh, four different events. Um, Boy, if I'm starting to talk gymnastics, I may go <laughs> off the rail. They do, they do the vault. They do the beam. Yeah. They do the floor. Incredible and stuff. Uh, they do, uh, oh, the bars. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's uh, really good to watch. A lot of talented players. And that looks like it is number 65 for Bridgewater. Ryan Luis. Yep. Wanted to be sure before we made that proclamation, and Luis does not appear to be putting any weight on his left leg. And Ryan Luis checking in. I saw him come in in the parking lot earlier today. 6'3", 310 pounds. Physical that's presence. A, that's a college size for sure. Yep. Yeah, this side, uh, this doesn't look good for Luis. He's, like you said, not putting any weight. His teammates are helping him off the field. Uh, I hope Luis is okay. Couldn't tell exactly what happened. No, definitely not. Uh, Luis now maybe putting a little weight on that leg. A couple of his teammates helping him off. He gets a nice hand from the Bethlehem Field crap. Of course, an interesting spot for the Red Devils to be in. On the one hand, I think you're probably happy if you go into the locker room down seven. On the other hand, you did have a couple of opportunities in opposing territory. Got shut down on a fourth and long inside the 40. Got shut down on a fourth and goal at three. So, Yeah, I would say big picture if, if it remains 21 to 14. I think Central probably has to feel yeah, pretty good about sure. it. The way, uh, the way things had started, they've stabilized the game, and the offense has certainly gotten uh, gotten alive and looked good. But you're right, there was a golden opportunity to tie the game there, and they didn't. On the other hand, the way they have competed tonight, the effort they have shown, 
has been tremendous. And Casey Ranzone was talking about the confidence of his team, how it hasn't wavered. We haven't seen it waver tonight. They've responded to most of the blows from Bridgewater. And we'll see Absolutely. if there's one more here. Clock Absolutely. running inside of two minutes. They took that punch early on and uh, and uh, living to tell about it. Be a give. Hinton bounces it outside to the 15 and spun down just short of the 20. It'll be second down. And Bridgewater in no hurry. Second down. They'll be happy to take this down theoretically to the end of the half. Minute and a half to play. Cordello behind center. It's hitting again and not much there. Nice stop by the Hunter and Central defense. Zachary Schultz in on the stop. Well, Hunter and Central's got a couple timeouts, and I think they just used one. And the Red Devils call the timeout. Well, they got one remaining, 112 on the clock, and this becomes an interesting third down call for Scott Bray in the Bridgewater sideline. How aggressive do they want to be? Yep. Uh, first down, more or less, could end the half. Got to be a little bit careful about that, but you're right. I think they probably want to get that first down and let that clock move for sure. Hunter and Central is thinking stop. Boy, did I just speak that obvious phrase? I think <laughs> they want to get that first down. Yeah, I think they do want to get the first down. It's usually preferred. But Hunter and Central is thinking, on the other hand, get a stop, get the ball back, maybe make something out of the last minute or so of quarter number two. Good grief, Captain Obvious has made <laughs> into the press box. The hey, that's what I'm here for. The Pan no, the Pan no, me. The Panthers <laughs> want the first down. So. Ah. Oh, gosh. So what will the call be for Bridgewater? Brady Cordilla has had a huge first half. And remember, they've thrown a couple of, uh, couple of bombs that yep. have worked perfectly. So don't forget that. And Colin Cordilla has gotten behind the uh, defense both times. And they've got three men wide out there. So let's see. Cordilla going to throw, bounces it out, looking around. Got a first down, down at the 30, stays in bounds. Clock stops with a minute four. So Cordilla getting it done with his legs. We've seen both facets of what he's able to do. He moves the sticks, and that might be the end of this first half. Got to run at least one more play. 45 seconds to play. I think they're going to try to do something here on this one play. They've we'll got see. two timeouts. Yep. Cordella looking, steps up, pocket collapsing, able to throw it somehow, Ooh. and it's caught. What a wow. throw by Brady Cordilla with a defender wrapped all over him. He makes the throw to Matthew McCallick for a first down. And I'm thinking the Panther fans on this sideline were probably saying, no, 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 yes. <laughs> Wow, that looked like it was a dangerous pass, and it was a beautiful one. And suddenly, Panthers are moving the ball, but again, only 34 seconds left. So they got to be a little careful here. From their own 46. Cordilla throws. Looking deep. Looking for McKellick. He's got it, but out of bounds. Both feet out when he made that catch. 27 seconds to play in the second quarter. Second down. Kind of from a hundred and central standpoint, you're holding your breath in a couple of these long yeah. passes. So uh, I have no reason to think they probably won't dial another one up here. The secondary has been tested all night for the Red Devils. This one will be a run. Brady Cordilla keeps it himself. Lost the ball. It's on the ground. And hundred and central has it. A fortuitous play there for the Red Devils. Zachary Central Schultz gets makes the, the recovery. Only 20 seconds left, though. But uh, hey, time for a couple plays. One timeout to go. So, and a Panther down. It's another offensive lineman. That's Greg Rosati. Slow to get up. So Hunter and Central gets it at the Bridgewater 46. 20 seconds to play. Well, at minimum, this thwarts the opportunity for Bridgewater to score at the end of the half. 
And now maybe something brewing for the Red Devils. Still one timeout in the pocket of Casey Ransom. Seems like an awful lot of confusion here for the Red Devils. Well, the whole playbook should be open with 20 seconds to play. We'll see what they dial up. Fakes the handoff, throw is low, and it's incomplete. We're looking for Connor Gray. It's second down. 15 seconds to play second quarter. So time for probably two more plays here, Jimmy. And they still have that timeout. I'm thinking this would be a time to uh, look for Owen Bill, see if he can make something happen. He's at the bottom of your screen. Looking that way, got him. They get him out of bounds. Good gain on second down. They get about eight. Ten seconds to play second quarter. They played off coverage on Bill. He gets an eight-yard catch. So we said they had two plays left. I think they still have two plays left. Three receivers yet again. One timeout remaining for the Red Devils. Snap another quick throw and it's a complete. Miscommunication there. Two guys in the area, Connor Gray, Trevor Fish. Fourth down, seven seconds left. Could be Hail Mary time here for Hunter and Central. Seems like that would be uh, very much in order right here. Throw it deep, get back there, throw it deep and see what happens. And certainly the Bridgewater secondary, as we see three of them are back deep. They're waiting for that Hail Mary. Fourth and two. Could be the last play of the half. Lenteni over the middle has it picked off. Two seconds to go in the first half. Intercepted by C.J. Stevens. And that will more than likely be how we go into the locker room. Yeah, that's just a statistical disappointment. Nothing more than that there. It's uh, two seconds left. But all in all, Central's, you know, as we mentioned a minute or two ago, they're, they're not really in a bad spot here. Like the way this offense is going, defenses stop the bleeding a bit. We'll have to see what this, uh, how this injury plays out to uh, Ryan Luis. To Luis. Yeah. He is a big part of their offensive line, and I do mean a big part. So that's the half. Bridgewater 21, 100 Central 14. What a 24 minutes we have had. Here at Basilone Field. We'll be back to the second half after this, but first a preview of Hunter and Central's other sports and what they've got going on in the coming weeks and months. You're watching Hunter and Central football. We'll be right back. some big names that we lost but we're definitely going to come back stronger this year and I think that carrying on the legacy is like definitely a something that our team is looking to continue. I think my favorite thing is everyone's willingness to be a part of the team. There's no stars here. We are all working together and the unity that's come with this team I think it's going to be really special. This has been one of the best blessings I've had in my life. The people I've met here, the friendships I've created, it honestly is like a family to me. They just taught me how to be the best leader possible, how to encourage my teammates even when I'm feeling down. They've never ever made anyone feel bad about themselves and I hope to do that with my teammates as well. Well it's just a very big opportunity for everybody who comes in because this team is very welcoming. The whole a uh, group of people are very welcoming. We train very hard. We do a lot of competition stuff, and it's just a good opportunity for people. Just from this last summer, I've seen an amazing work rate, some amazing talent, and even though we've lost some amazing players, I really think that we've brought in so many more great players. And um, we really do have the potential, especially with all the veteran players coming in again this year. We really do have what it takes to go far. Well, I don't know if you necessarily fill any one individual shoes, but you fill shoes by committee, you know? Um, we have a lot of new players on the team this year, 
In addition to graduating Emily, we graduated nine starters, uh, 12 seniors. So there's a, a lot of, of shoes to be filled. And that just means that there's a lot of opportunity for the players over there who, who made the team. And they know that. So the work rate and the energy and the intensity is, is really high. We're a very driven team. A lot of individuals here who have worked uh, very hard this off season uh, and are ready to work in the preseason into the season. Um, so that's, that's the main thing for me. Very driven team. Young, but very, very driven. Uh, being uh, my third year on varsity soccer, uh, just being able to represent Central on, on this shirt on your chest, it just it makes you feel so proud. And uh, that's what we play for is what's on our chest. Uh, Central's a great place to be, great program, and we're just a family, which makes this amazing to be a part of. It's something very proud to know that I'm part of this program and seeing the, the rich history and successful history that this program has had, being a part of it makes me feel very proud and I want to be able to make the rest of uh, everybody else here and the rest of Central proud in filling uh, the successful program and making sure that successfulness uh, moves on to the next generation. The beauty of high school soccer is that every year is different. You know, you've got different players coming in uh, and you know, you know some of the guys coming in who can help you. but. You're, you're rebuilding a team every single year. Uh, the good thing is for us, obviously, we have talented players, uh, and we focus on that, on what we have coming in, uh, and we build that that chemistry as a team. Uh, and I think, you know, based on last year, obviously, we had a lot of success. The last few years, we've had a lot of success. Uh, now it's just a matter of finding what our strengths are, building off of that, and uh, you know, taking it to the limit again. Yeah, I definitely feel like we have expectations that we need to lead and we need to meet each year. And I feel like we're doing a good job. Like, we're already starting and we're meeting expectations that we needed to last year and we're doing it that again this year. It makes me feel that I have to live up to it. It's a big standard that you have to live up to and you have to play really hard because that's the central name. I think it'll definitely be interesting, like all new faces and new positions. It's going to be eye-opening just like, like Coach always says, like, it's easy to move everyone's position around so someone could come in as playing defense and move up to forward so it'll be interesting seeing how that plays out. Definitely a work in progress. Um, we only have two returning starters for that ever stepped on a varsity field. Uh, we lost 12 seniors so we have a lot of shoes to fill um, but they're working hard. We're seeing a lot of great things. Um, our underclassmen are really proving themselves so um, although there's a lot of new faces especially in goal um, I think we'll compete and we'll do great things once we get it all all set together. We have a group of guys that really want to be here. Um, and we're excited about what we see, and we, and we have runners and hitters. Um, you know, uh, defensively, guys that may be undersized. We guys got we got guys that will run and tackle, and, that, and that's the first prerequisite of being a football player. The way they've been practicing, the way they've been preparing, uh, you know, it. I hope it lends to to winning games on Friday night. But at the end of the day, um, I couldn't be prouder of how these kids have practiced this year and everything they've done in, in the off season. You know, so in a lot of ways, we've already won. I mean, the camaraderie is great. Uh, coming off last year, not having a locker room, um, things really weren't normal in a lot of senses. Um, didn't have normal football season, not normal school, but this year things are seem to, seem to be coming back to normal, and it, it feels really good. I think we definitely learned to you know, keep the energy up, not to get down on ourselves. It's a fresh week each week. Um, definitely to come out like we won the game next week in practice and work towards the next game. I think we learned that, you know, we got to execute. You know, execution is key and, and knowing your job is the key. Losing isn't fun, obviously, but, you know, our team, we've done a, a much better job, you know, everybody knowing their jobs and a lot of coaches coaching guys up and um, hopefully we'll know our jobs as soon as September 2nd comes. It's, it's an honor. It's an experience. I mean, yeah, we got amazing guys back there. I mean, everyone, you know, who's in that backfield, they work their butts off, you know, to get in that position. Going into this year, just 
Just play as hard as I can for the team. If we can, maybe even a championship. Right now we have three seniors that have three extremely different personalities and it's really been kind of a nice leadership thing for us because they present different opportunities of leadership for the rest of the team. And our goal this year is to also get some of those uh, juniors and sophomores on board with the leadership role so that as the seniors kind of leave the program after this year, that carries on and becomes a little bit stronger once they're gone also. I think I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. Uh, ever since I was a freshman, I was always thinking about my senior season. I can't wait to be older. I can't wait to be the leaders of the team. And even though we have a younger team this year, we're just going to try our best to work very hard and get as many reps and as much practice as we can get to be the best that we can be. Well, although we are limited on seniors, we have a very young team that's very capable of everything and last year we even took on a younger role and we brought up a lot of younger classmen and we were able to train them with the seniors that left and I think it's going to be a great year. I feel like this team is great honestly we just have such a great bond and we can communicate easily and it's just easy to talk to each other because I feel like we just have a wide range of different players and hitters and passers and we just all form into one. Just about ready for the start of the second half here at Basilone Field, Bridgewater, New Jersey. It's a seven point lead for Bridgewater over 100 in Central, 21 14 after 24 minutes of play. Alongside my partner Jim Johnson, I'm Jimmy Sullivan. Happy you could be along with us here on HCTV. Jim, what a half of football we saw here tonight. Both offenses explosive, couple touchdown passes from Frankie Lentin, three touchdown passes by Brady Cordilla for Bridgewater Raritan, and I can only imagine what the second half has in store. Just hope it's half as good as what we saw in that first half of football. It, it really was great, and I was so doom and gloom at, at the start of this game, especially when I got out to 14 and nothing. But the Red Devils really just came alive offensively. This is the offense that the coach was really hoping to see. So many weapons between Owen Bill and Trevor Fish. And Julio had a great game as a, uh, running, just playing great. So, uh, so a great offensive half, 400 in Central. Now they got to keep that momentum going. Defensively, they came alive a little bit in the second part of the half after not looking good for a while. So, uh, so we got a brand new ball game. Would have been nice on that uh, that botched punt to punch it in and have a tie game, but uh, can't have it all. All things considered, Central has to feel pretty decent about where they are right now. Again, our score, 21-14. Three touchdown passes from Brady Cordilla for Bridgewater. Two of those went to his brother, Colin. Got behind the defense a couple of times for Bridgewater. That'll be something that I think Hunter and Central might look to clean up here in the second half. But we, we talked a lot in the first half. Hunter and Central got a big deficit last week in that loss to Hillsborough. They were down 30 nothing in the second quarter, and we were wondering if that was going to happen again here. And to their credit, they were able to come back in a very competitive first half for Central. And they'll have to have a chance in the fourth quarter to maybe get a win out of this. It could be a very good win for them early in the season. And this, right, this is the kind of game that really could turn around the fortunes of a season. You can go from a rough opening week after a rough season, and then they could win this game on the road, especially after the way things started. Wow, this could really turn a season around. But I'll be perfectly honest, if they just play, and I don't want to talk in terms of moral victories, sure. but if they can just play a very, very tough physical game here in the second half, Central will feel good about where the rest of the season could take them. They played a solid physical game in the first half. Julio Marsiglia, impressive on the ground, getting the start at running back tonight, and he has been terrific. Bridgewater does get the second half kickoff. 100 Central received the opening kickoff in the first half. So it'll be Antoine Hinton. Frankie Verano back for the Panthers. Now check that. Verano is going to be one of the up men, I believe. And it'll actually be Evan Goldberg, the starting running back, back there for 
Verano's brother Greg Verano, a three-year starter here for Bridgewater and a four-year starter on the baseball diamond. So, uh, so an iconic Bridgewater uh, Panther. A lot of multi-talented athletes here. Brady Cordilla, Rutgers lacrosse recruit. Frankie Lentine, Stony Brook lacrosse recruit. Underway here in the third quarter. Good kick will go back to Hinton at the 10. Looking for a lane and he's got a burst and there he goes. One man to beat, he beat him. Antoine Hinton takes the second half kickoff, 90 yards. Touchdown Panthers. Oh boy, that is not, not what we were uh, looking to get things started for from a 100 and central standpoint. Special teams, oy, 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 oy. tough one, tough, tough way to start this half. Antoine Hinton went untouched. Great blocking by the Panthers. And a special teams play for Bridgewater to start this second half on a roaring note. Sam Valera on for the extra point. Extra point up and good, 28-14. And a bit of a gut punch to open the second half for Hunter and Central. Boy, it's been a, just a variety of big plays in this game for the Panthers. Uh, between Cordilla's two long passes for touchdowns and now a kick return, big play. They're uh, a dangerous team to watch on film. Nice start to the second half for the Panthers. So now it's up to the central offense to respond, and they have done so all night. Seems like every time the Panthers want to pull away, 100 central offense moves it down the field, gets some points. And it'll be up to Frankie Lentine and company to do that yet again here. 15 seconds into the third quarter, a two-score game. Bridgewater Raritan on top of 100 and central. You get the feel now more than ever, Jimmy. They really do need a nice offensive drive here just to kind of uh, put some sap on that fresh wound. Trevor Fish back to receive. Watch the up men. Valera has had a habit of kicking it on the shorter side tonight. Bridgewater trying to go to 2-0 on the year, 100 and Central trying to avoid falling to 0-2. High kick, little confusion, it hits the deck. Trevor Fish has to field it at his own five. Whoa. Talk about a difference of uh, kickoff returns in the first 20 seconds of the second half. One team converts for a touchdown. The other is uh, saddled deep in its own territory. Wow. Five yard line for the Red Devils. So I'll have to go Five. the length of the field. It looked like Marsiglia and Jamal Kuhn, two of the up men, uh, were a little confused as to who wanted to field that ball, and it went off both their hands. And now the Red Devils have their work cut out for them. Two score game. Pinned back in their own end zone. Lentin with it in shotgun. They've made some big plays on this Panther defense tonight. It's a give to Marsiglia, bounces it outside, and not much there. Might have lost a yard, a host of defenders in on the stop. And one of the tougher things too, Jimmy, when you're back, pinned back in your own territory, you gotta be careful not to, not to do anything dangerous and risky, because things can, uh, a turnover here would be a disaster. Lentin backed up at his own four. Good crowd here tonight at Bazalone Field. And boy, we miss this. Be another handoff to Marsiglia up the middle, and he lost. Well, he got back to the line of scrimmage, but no further. Geez, Jimmy, maybe we should start talking Fordham football again to bring, some, <laughs> <laughs> to bring that karma back. Yeah, Fordham taking on Monmouth tomorrow. <laughs> right team in the FCS. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be 6 o'clock at Jack Coffee Field. I believe there are tickets available. If not, 
You can check it out on ESPN+. Plus. All right, let's see if this brings some karma, bringing a little Fordham chat here. Over here, it's third and 11. Offense backed up at its own four. It'll be a screen out to Trevor Fish, looking for room, doesn't have any, no game. Fourth down. And a three well, and out for the 100 Central offense. Three and out from a terrible spot in the field. Uh, so you know Bridgewater's going to be in business to start this, uh, this drive. And Owen Bill's going to punt out of the very back of his own end zone. Return man back at the 40 for the Panthers. Believe that's it. Bill gets it away. It's a good kick. Hinton runs up to it inside the 35. Some room up the sideline. And he takes it inside his own 25. We'll see where they mark it out. But nonetheless, excellent starting field position for Bridgewater. Wow, just the, what the Panthers uh, wanted this half. We were only uh, not even three minutes into it. They already have a touchdown on the board on a kickoff return. And they take the ball for the first time at the central 20-yard line. Wow, that is some field position. Further up than uh, I even thought initially. And so it's Brady Cordilla with Evan Goldberg in the backfield. Fakes the handoff, throws to his brother Colin. He's got a convoy in front of him, breaks a tackle, and taken down at the 15. A flag comes in as blockers moved upfield. See what the penalty's for. Looks like it's coming back. It's a hold on Bridgewater. So that helps things somewhat for the 100 and central cause. It'll be first and about 20. They put the football down at the 26. So it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So it'll be first and 16 for the Panthers. Cardilla bobbles the snap, gets it back. Steps up, runs around, he does this so well, ends a wide open touchdown. Matthew Michalik. Brady Cordilla does it again. Scrambles out of the pocket, finds a man, and burns the Red Devils defense. Cordilla just having a, a great game. He's such an athlete. You can tell, as we mentioned earlier, Division I lacrosse player and just a uh, Division I athlete. He really knows what he's doing back there. Doesn't help to have wide open receivers, too. Breakdown and coverage. Extra point from Valera is good. 35 14, 856 to play, third quarter. Well, time to regroup again for the Red Devils. They've got to hope for better field position and, you know, try to get something going offensively. Hard to, hard to say too much about Central's defense there because they, <laughs> they're putting a bad spot first to, with, uh, with Bridgewater getting great field position at the 20. And, of course, the other touchdown was a kick return. So not too much blame on the Central defense there. But uh, offense has got to get something going, score here, hope to get back in this game. And not to make excuses, too, but the way – Cordilla runs around, makes it so difficult on an opposing defense to kind of corral him in, keep him in the pocket. Once he gets outside, it will yep. create so many plays. So we'll have the kickoff here and a bit of an extended huddle on the 100 and central side. Trevor Fish is the deep man. And there was a hundred uh, special teams miscue on the last possession for the Red Devils. Salvalero will kick it away. Oh 
Another high kick, not deep. Who's going to get it? It'll be one of the up men surging forward with room. Out across the 40 yard line and taken down there, Jamal Kuhn. Just what the doctor ordered. The 100 in central offense gets good field position to start this drive. Just for the doctor order there, you know, a lot of momentum on a kick return, of course. As you saw when Bridgewater took it back, they got all the momentum in the world. Now Central's got to try to turn this thing around, Jimmy. Kuhn marked down at the 41. That's where Frankie Lentine and company will take over. See what the play selection is here for the 100 and central offense, which has shown explosiveness tonight. Fake Marsiglia rolls it out. Throws sideline and a catch. Trevor Fish made the play. He gains 10 in the first down. Another great catch by Trevor Fish. Had that one in the end zone in the second quarter. So Trevor Fish uh, showing why the 5-760 pounder is such a valuable part of the Red Devil offense. A fish with the toe tap near the sideline to get one foot down. I heard the whistle and I thought, don't tell me they're going to instant replay. <laughs> then I realized they can't do that in high school. Yeah. I think we're the instant give me, replay. Give me a little VAR. Yeah. <laughs> Gain of 10, first down for the Red Devils. You figure Frankie Lentine's going to have to shoulder a pretty good deal of the load to get this team back in it. Fakes the give, screen to Fish. Running outside, inside the 45. Gets about five, maybe six on that first down play. And they have gone to Fish time and time again. Compared him to Wayne Corbett earlier tonight. And I think with good reason. Sure-handed, good route runner, smart player. Give I'm just going to come up with someone more current, you know. <laughs> Marsiglia up the middle for three. It'll be third down and one. I think enough of our viewers will remember yeah, Wayne Corbett enough. from his yes. days in green. The, the seasoned viewers. For sure. Fake the gives, throws to Fish off his hands, incomplete. Good thing that was incomplete. I thought at first that might have been a backward pass, yeah. and that would have been a loss of six. Instead, uh, we've got a fourth and one, so much better opportunity, obviously. Fourth down and two. They're going to go for it. And I think not much choice right now. Three receivers. Marsiglia, Lentin in the backfield. And Hunter and Central in need of a first down. Ooh, almost an offside. Almost did jump offsides, yeah. That was Brian Schweitzer, the defensive end. Brandon Schweitzer, I beg your pardon. Fourth and two, Lentine rolls out. Has a man open, low and complete. Connor Gray, the intended target. Turnover on downs. And a particularly important one in this game. Boy, that, that feel-good situation of Central does seem a long time ago now, Jimmy, at this point. First uh, four and a half minutes of this second quarter, have been, or third quarter, have been a complete disaster from a Central standpoint. It's got to hope the defense can uh, make a play here. At least they don't have, uh, they're not burdened with a field position for Bridgewater of uh, 20 yards to go for a touchdown. Time to make another play. Ridgewater already 14 points in this quarter. Antoine Hinton's return and the throw to Matthew McKellick. Evan Goldberg stacked up at the line. He did get stacked up. Some nice gang tackling there by Central. Charles Cowart was the first one there for the Red Devils. No game for Goldberg. Second and ten. I guess that was a straight no gain. I thought it was a loss of one, but nice play by Central. Oh. It might have felt like a loss. It did feel like a loss. So we got Colin Cordilla now in the backfield next to his brother. He drops back, looks deep, and throws over the middle. Got Cordilla, first down. And in the Red Devils territory at the 47. Cordilla could obviously play quarterback at the next level in college. Not a Division I quarterback, as he is uh, an elite lacrosse player. But he could certainly, if he were of the mindset he wanted to try to to go somewhere and play football he certainly could have done that 
Man down for Hunter in Central. Looked to be suffered on the tackle of Cordilla after he made that catch and got the first down. Hoping that's just a cramp yeah. by the way the, the trainers are treating the player. Well, not to give false hope, but sometimes early in the season you see cramps. Yep. I think we saw that on the college side in week one. Saw a lot of guys in some of the hotter conditions cramping up. Uh, tonight, not a warm night by any means, but yep. that could happen in the first couple of weeks of the season. So we'll hope that's the case. Just a perfect night here as we mm. see some of the uh, central faithful making the trip straight up uh, Route 202. How far? I'm not uh, intimately familiar with this area. How far is, is Central from here? It is about 23 minutes, I think, my oh, ways okay. took me. 23, 24. Depends on what lights you hit, you know, on 202. But, yeah, yeah it's, uh, these schools are fairly close. Yeah. So I happen to live in the Hunter and Central District, but I'm at the north end of the district. Right. I am closer to Bridgewater High School as well as several others for that yeah, So this is kind of a, a home game for you as we see uh, uh, yeah, Zachary sort of. Schultz walk off the field. Except these guys are all looking at me funny like, who right. are these guys from Central? Who are they? So, so we'll hope Schultz is okay. He limps off under his own power. And actually a nice uh, warm welcome from the... Uh, athletic director today. And our, our thanks to both athletic departments for helping uh, hook us up, give us all the information we need to do Bridge this broadcast and bring it to you. Bridgewater AD John Maggio, just a pleasant guy, came up and talked to us for a while when we were getting situated, Matthew making us feel quite at home. Matthew McKellick tackled for a loss. That was Mateo Brito. Second down. So it'll be second down and 13, a loss of three. No real urgency right now for uh, for Bridgewater other than it's all clicking. You no sense in really slowing things down either. I got five wide receivers in a 21-point game halfway through the third quarter. Cadilla dropping back, spins away from a tackle, looking around, looking around, throws to his brother Colin. Inside the 30, down the sideline, Colin Cordilla, what a night. Touchdown, Bridgewater. The connection strong as ever, third touchdown of the night. For Colin Cordilla, and it's all Panthers right now. What a, what a treat it must be for these guys and for the Cordilla parents watching their two boys play. They play at a high level of lacrosse for the Bridgewater. And here on football, they're just tearing it up uh, the first two games of the season. Bobble snap, extra point is good. Nice recovery by Sam Valera. 42-14 Bridgewater. And there we saw it yet again. Brady Cordilla, protection broke down, rolled out of the pocket, made a play, and his brother Colin took care of the rest. What a third quarter this has been for Bridgewater Raritan. Yeah, it's been a uh, and it's been a nightmare for uh, for Central. Mm -hmm. We are exactly halfway through the third quarter. It's now 42 to 21, and that uh, that 21-14 situation where Central had yeah. a chance to score just feels like a long time ago. Well, you do learn a lot about teams in these types of situations. Absolutely. Down big, how they compete, how they fight. I think That's Coach right. Ransone, all told, was pretty happy with that last week. Correct. And we'll, we'll and it's, a it's a long season. That's just the way it is. Central knew the start of the season was going to be tough and doesn't get any easier with Phillipsburg next week before no. the schedule starts to soften up. But uh, you, you know what your schedule is. You just got to kind of uh, make the most of it. It's Phillipsburg next week, then at Ridge, and then home for Franklin as they head into October. Valero will kick it away. High pooch kick, and I think several of the Bridgewater players were caught off guard by that and jumped ahead of the kicker. And Scott Bray is not happy with that on the sideline. I'll be an offside. But Coach Bray hasn't had too much to be unhappy about tonight. A little, uh, little stretch in the second quarter maybe. That's been about it. 
Other than that, his offense has looked just wonderful tonight. I'll tell you, the coaches in these situations always find something to always. coach on. That's correct. Yep. A lot of coachable moments in every game and every practice. Now, how many times have you seen somebody like Nick Saban on the sideline? His team's up big, and he yes. is absolutely screaming at one of his players. 65 nothing over Citadel. Not enough. Never enough. Kickoff will be fielded by Kuhn. He's got room again. Dragon defenders forward, close to the 40 yet again. And again, good starting field position. Ball came out. Who's got it? I think they're going to say that the ball carrier was down at the time uh, of the fumble. Central maintains possession. The Bridgewater Oof. kids all think they have the ball, but uh, the referees aren't even batting an eyelash. Central ball. Fortunately, well, situations like this, one team points one way, the other team points the other way, and the referees have to discern That's right. who's right and who's making yeah. it up. Probably the hardest part of the job. First and 10 for Hunter and Central. 42-14 our score. Low snap, Bobble Marsigli is going to pick it up and run with it. And he'll make something out of this play. He gets two or three. Julio Marsigli absolutely making something out of nothing there. Julio Marsigli is on the carry. Gain of three yards. That looked like more disaster. Lentine's had some issues with snaps tonight. They've come out high. They've come out low. They've come out left and right. Nightfall here in New Jersey could not have asked for better weather on this Friday evening. Marsiglia will run it again. He's got room. First down in the Panther territory, knocked down at the 49. Move those chains. Good night for Julio Marsiglia running behind this improved offensive line. While I don't have updated statistics in front of me, Julio's put together some nice numbers tonight, no doubt about it. He's had a good game. Be interesting to see what the final tally is for Marsiglia. But he has run it admirably all night. Lentine will fake the handoff, looking deep. Bill down the sideline, incomplete. Well covered by Dylan Corsi. Well, Owen Bill so hard to cover down that sideline when he gets ahead of steam. That was about as well as you could defend that play. Yep, they took the home run shot with Owen. Hey, why not at this point, right? They've looked for Bill a number of times tonight. Trevor Fish has been the primary target with Bill close behind. Second down and 10. Marsiglia stacked up, but keeps the legs churning and gets about four. Leo Marsiglia on the carry. Third down and six, 420 to go in the third quarter. And the score 42-14 in favor of Bridgewater. Lentine rolls right. And cut off the sideline. He's got a run. He's going to be short. Got a couple on the run, but it'll be fourth down. As well, he was looking towards that sideline. No doubt about it here, Jimmy. They're going for uh, they're going for first down here. Why not? Down 28 points. The player down, a Bridgewater player, who's down on the 100 and central sideline. Check to see if he's okay. Seen a few injuries here in the second half. Yeah, there have been a few injuries tonight. Hopefully nothing too serious, especially for Bridgewater at this point of the game. But we appreciate your uh, 
watching our live stream tonight on the 100 and Central, the HCTV live stream. One of the uh, few positives that came out of the pandemic here as we've uh, started to bring you a lot of more 100 and Central action on the live stream. And we're happy to be here for a road game tonight, right up the road in Bridgewater. Beautiful night for football. The game not going our way for Central at this point, but great to be here and great you're able to uh, take advantage and watch our broadcast. Ryan Driscoll was the man down. He runs across the sideline under his own power. Good to see. So fourth and four, 43-yard line of Bridgewater, and not much of a decision to be made here. They're going to go for it. Need to get to the 39 for a first down. Lentino roll left, looking, almost intercepted. It's incomplete and a turnover on down. Dylan Corsi jumped the route. They were looking for Connor Gray and another turnover on down to the Red Devils. Yeah, it's just uh, not going Central's way at all here, Jimmy, in the third quarter to say the least. Got three and change to go and uh, this is uh, just kind of really, really turned the last, the last uh, 20 minutes or so of football. Cardilla under center. How often do you see that nowadays? Goldberg surging through the hole with a nice gain of six. Yeah, you don't see it under center yeah. too much. It's right in this stand. Not even in the pro game much anymore, really. I know, I, and I'm still, uh, maybe it's, it's because of my age. I always wonder when it's fourth down and like a foot to go, when they go out yeah. of the shotgun, it just doesn't seem logical to me. Why yeah. do that? But it's interesting that you note that because... You know, the high school game to the college game to the pro game used to be there were pretty big differences between each as Goldberg will get tripped up for a couple. You know, there was a difference from high school to college and then to the pros. And there's a, a lot of the same things. You know, you could see a, a play or a scheme on a, a high school game on a Friday, and then you would see it on a Sunday in the, in the NFL because that's just the way the, the system works now. A lot of high school college coaches making the leap as this will be a sneak, needing two yards is Cordilla, and I think he's got it. But the game is so, uh, it's a lot more homogenized, I think, across levels than it used to be 5, 10, 15 years ago. Well, geez, I was reading something about now college guys can make money playing football. Yep. <laughs> This I was neat. watching the, the <laughs> commercials, and I was seeing the players, and I said, wait a minute. Head off to Goldberg. He'll get a couple, maybe three. God help us if name, image, likeness ever creeps its way down to the <laughs> high school level somewhere. Yeah. I just think it's the craziest thing. I, yeah. I, you know. Well, it is a lot to wrap your head around, you know, and you, oh. you did it one way. You saw the kid from uh, Ohio State's five-star recruit from yep. Texas. Skips his senior season of high school. He comes up. He's yeah. already signed with an and agent. And he's not the only one. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of kids doing yep. that. Uh, wins certainly a change. Very much interesting times, as that'll uh, be, I think, an offsides. So that'll be an added five yards for Bridgewater. Red Devils losing a little bit of composure here. Mm. Offsides, Red Devils. Cordilla back to throw, looking deep. Got a man, and it's caught. Dylan Corsi, touchdown. Fifth touchdown of the night for Brady Cordilla, and it's all Panthers right now. Well, Cordilla just looks beautiful back there, doesn't he? Yeah. He just throws a, just a nice ball and had another open receiver. Just a brilliant game for him. First of the night, first of the year for Dylan Corsi. And he does so in grand style. 39 yards from Brady Cordilla. Extra point is up. It is good. And a 35 point lead for Bridgewater Raritan. 49 14.
I was hoping the uh, Bridgewater band might play something of, of my hit list. They had, <laughs> they had my Sharona and Tequila in what the first hear? half. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing that Bridgewater fight song a little too much tonight. So. Uh, <laughs> they should play, you know. You should be able to give requests. That's what yeah, I Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, it's, it's like a jukebox. You know, you put it in and then you, you, you pay a nominal fee and then you get to hear what you want to hear. Having spent some time with our marching Red Devils the last couple of weeks, I can tell you how much time yeah. these students put yeah. into their craft. It's unbelievable. The You know, fans always notice sports and kids practice in sports. You know, surely if you're a band parent, you know what your kids are putting into. But I don't know that a lot of people really are aware the amount of time and effort they put into playing in the band. Wow. Well, we saw an elaborate halftime show here uh, from the Bridgewater Band. I imagine we would uh, see the same see the same from Hunterdon. Yep. You know, when they're back in action. This will be fielded by Jamal Kuhn. He runs it forward past the 30, past the 35. Jamal Kuhn on the return, first and 10 to the Red So we have a running clock, 35 point lead for yep. Bridgewater Raritan. Yep. Now that could go out of effect if uh, 100 and Central was to mount a comeback, but and for now, does, clock running. Does look like we have another uh, quarterback taking some snaps on the sidelines. Well, and that is did Jack it. Bray. Jack Bray is the son of Coach Scott Bray, so I see him taking snaps over here. So he might be coming in. Because we got a timeout here. So uh, Jack Bray on the sideline. And if that is it for Brady Cordilla, what a night. Five touchdowns. Yes. Ran around like crazy. Oh. Just an uber impressive performance from him. I wish we had the, uh, uh, the statistical update on Cordilla because he just had a marvelous game tonight. In great, three quarters. In three quarters, correct. Not even really a, a criticism of the 100 and central defense, but just what he was able to do. Unbelievable. Yes. Yep. We're started up again. That looked to be a timeout taken by Bridgewater. Frankie Lentine's still out there for the Red Devils. Fakes the handoff, throws outside, has a man, Trevor Fish. Solid gain on first down, and that ends the third quarter. It is all Bridgewater here as we head to the fourth. 49-14 our score from Basilone Field. 12 minutes to play. We'll be back for the fourth quarter here on HCTV. Well, there's a woman walking in with a uh, handful of money. So it's either our lucky day or it must be the 50-50 drawing here ah. at Bridgewater. 50-50 ah, yeah. drawing. And I didn't even get a chance to get tickets. <laughs> Well, what I usually do is, whenever there's a 50-50, I don't know if you do this. As soon as I call the number, no matter what the number is, I just say, I won. <laughs> <laughs> right, eh? Say it loud, say it Say it right, yes. And you then the real winner comes forward a couple minutes later, and you that's the fun. You might get a couple but, dirty looks, Jimmy, but yeah. what the heck, right? <laughs> hey, look, I admit it. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's kind of an unsavory thing to do, but hey. I will not be doing it tonight. Okay. Well, 50-50 notwithstanding. Lentine in the gun. Clock running. Inside of 12 minutes to play. There'll be a handoff. Marsiglia bounces it outside. He's got a first down. Up to the 44. Not going to stop the clock. Well, barring a late comeback here, 100 and Central will move to 0 and 2. Giving up 40 points or more in each of the first two games. Phillipsburg next week, and then they're at Ridge. Bridgewater Raritan, on the other hand, they'll go to 2 and 0 with a win. This is the first of three straight home games for them. They've got Ridge 
and Hillsboro after this. Fate to Marsiglia, screen to Bill. Trying to make a man miss, cannot do so. There'll be a loss of yards. Dylan Corsi made the stop and a loss of about two. Here is tonight's 50-50 number on a red ticket. 755 Jimmy, don't you Seven, dare five, yell, <laughs> I won. Eight, eight, three. If you have that number, please report to the press box. I did not have any numbers. I will report the following numbers, though. It's a 49-14 yeah. game. Bridgewater Ooh, on top of Hunter Central. Smooth, very smooth. Ten minutes to go, third, uh, fourth quarter. 50-50 drawn, and maybe Bridgewater. One, uh, one shy of a 50-burger. Exactly ten minutes to go now. Lentine fakes the handoff, throws it outside. Got a man out there, it's Fish. He's out around midfield. It'll be third down. Hearing some sirens in the background, there is a fire truck behind the uh, end zone that Hunter and Central is going towards now. A large hoisted American flag on the ladder. Had a moment of silence pregame tomorrow, the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Hard to believe it's been 20 years. It really is hard to believe, Jimmy. It's just uh, such a sobering day. Yeah. Lentine back to throw, deep over the middle, incomplete. Certainly are uh, thoughts and prayers with the victims of that day in Lower Manhattan, in Washington, and in Pennsylvania. Fourth down and five. Nine minutes to go, fourth quarter. Hunter and Central is going to go for it. The first to whistle. Timeout, Red Devils. They've got two remaining. So that stops the clock. 8.42 to play. So I, I'm an employee of Hunter and Central, mm -hmm. and this morning, uh, we have in our lobby of our uh, school, we have a uh, a piece of steel from uh, from the World Trade Center Dollar. sitting in there, and it was interesting. Have, some of the history teachers were up, and we're a new, obviously a new era of children. These children that are at high school yeah. are ranging between 14 and 18 years old. They weren't born during 2020, so it was actually a pleasure for me to sit in on four different history classes the last two days and I shot some video and watched the teachers explain to the students kind of a part of history that was so important in this country yet something they obviously would never have experienced. Yeah, and, you know, full disclosure, I'm not someone who has a great memory of that day. I was only two and where I went to high school, uh, Burton Catholic High School up north as Lantin is going to get the first down. I went to Burton Catholic High School up north, and there's a beautiful memorial uh, outside Burton Catholic. Two waterfalls, uh, names inscribed. There were a handful of people from Burton Catholic who were alumni who were lost on 9-11. Uh, and it was a beautiful reminder whenever you, you know, went past the building of, uh, of the sadness of that day, but in some ways also uh, the heroism of that day from the fire department, the first responders. And so, so many and so people forth. still have connections to it yes. to this day, and it's just a, just a sobering reminder every year. Lentino will run it again, and he's tripped up this time with a gain of two. So tomorrow, the 20th anniversary. Second down and eight. Yankees and the Mets playing this weekend to commemorate the anniversary as well. Mets up big in that game right now. Uh, for anyone who may be interested in that, the, the Mets are up big. Mets are say? up big, eight to two last oh, I checked. Oh, we love that, Jimmy. Yep. That's a good had thing. To, had to slip that in. Yes. Marsiglia on the run. Did you hear that, everybody? The Mets are up eight and to two. He's got yes. a first down. Yeah. Hey, I mean, 
honestly, the way both these teams are playing right now, it's not much. <laughs> yes. Both the, both the Yankees and the Mets, uh, the Mets are not looking stringing like together losses right now. Yeah. Mets doing so in particularly disappointing fashion against some pretty bad teams. Yes, it's been a it's been a up and down and up and down week. That's for that's for yeah. sure. Just midst of a pennant race, can't have it. But maybe one last charge in him. Who knows? Marsiglia will get another run. He's up the middle. Room to run. Another first down. And he's stacked up inside the 25. The Running carry. clock still going. Closing in on six minutes to play. Julio Marsiglia will have some nice numbers tonight. And I would think he's got about 100 yards rushing. Well, he's gotten his fair share of carries. Yep. They have trusted him a good deal. On this drive in particular, they've given it to him a bunch. Lentine will drop back to throw under pressure, steps up, he's sacked. Matthew Messing got there for Bridgewater. It'll be second and long. So you have to say, this offensive line for Hunter and Central, albeit in a loss, has played well tonight. It's a young offensive line. They're trying to break some guys in, but they've played a really solid game. Running room for Marsiglia. Time to throw for Lentine. Yes, Just that's not true. It's a, it's a young offensive line, yeah. as you said. Well, losing all their linemen from last year was certainly uh, certainly tough for Central in the uh, rebuilding process. Give to Marsiglia. It gets back to the original line of scrimmage or thereabouts. But Lenteni tonight, he's had room to run. He's had room to throw. Third down. Officially third and 11. Hunter and Central has had it for the whole quarter. Give Marsiglia tripped up at the 21. It'll be fourth down, and you can expect Hunter and Central to go for this. They've kept Lenteni, the starting quarterback, as well as the other starters out there here in this fourth quarter. 49-14 our score, four and a half minutes to play. Be nice if Central could punch in one more and finish this game at least on a high note. A little bit of a confidence boost would be for sure heading into Absolutely. next week. Lenteni back to throw, stepping up. Steps left, going to run, looking for the first. He's got it. And the chains move again. Now inside of four minutes to go, Jimmy, these uh, running, running clock situations really do... Uh, Obviously, speed things up. I tell you, it's a deceptively long drive when you yes. think about it. Yes, it is. Marsiglia up the middle, room to run. Runs over a man inside the five, another first down. Another first the down clock for Julio Marsiglia. And Central punches it in. Again, we don't have official stats, but Marsiglia, we think, up around 400 yards. Yeah. First down for the Red lines it up. Inside of three minutes to play. Thank you all for watching on HCTV all night. My man Jim Johnson over here has been running the camera, doing the color commentary. Happy to have you along with us. You forgot about the graphics, Jimmy. That's true, and the graphics, and the <laughs> graphics. I apologize. Fade back corner incomplete. <laughs> Jim's a busy man. <laughs> busy man. But we'll have coverage of uh, 100 and Central football and all 100 and Central sports all season long. You can tune in right here on it's HCTV. It's great having everybody back. It's oh, great it's awesome. working it for the home games with the students. Yeah.
That I very much missed last year. And on a personal note, if I may say, having the fans back here, the student section, the band, the, the pageantry of high school football, yep. it's terrific. It's terrific. Well, it's great having you down on loan tonight for <laughs> Bergen Catholic, Jimmy. Yeah. Give Marsiglia. Oh, no. Balls out, recovered by the Panthers. 100 at Central couldn't punch it in. It's run out across the 15. Dylan Corsi recovered, and that'll just about do it. Well, they had it punched out again. A couple years ago, this game ended in similar fashion. The outcome a little different this time. It was a 35-point oh, game That was a this gut time punch, around. that game two years ago. A gut punch. This one, unfortunate for Julio, and this is kind of a fitting way to wrap this game up. But, uh, but certainly not of the magnitude of two years ago. Well, Marsiglia, a great night. Just an unfortunate bookend for him. Could he get a new quarterback into the game here for Bridgewater? It's Jack Brick, son of Scott Bray, the head coach. He's under center. It's a give up the middle. And it'll be a gain of a couple for Frankie Verano. Inside of 120 to go. And a lot for the Bridgewater fans to be happy about here tonight. Hundred and Central will be 0 and 2. Phillipsburg in the home opener next week. To give to Verano. It's down across the 30, another first down. Clock continues to run inside of a minute. Well, I'm guessing we got probably one more play left in this one. Although for the young players like Bray and Bridgewater, these guys are up to the line of scrimmage. Hey, it's a chance to play varsity football. They want to make the most of it. Every rep is valuable. Yep, they're not out of here to run off the clock. At this point in your career, Bray, just a sophomore. Gives it to Verano, room around the edge. Across midfield, out of bounds, inside the fourth. And they love the effort from Frankie Verano. Well, Frankie Verano, I said earlier, his older brother Greg, uh, a standout athlete here at Bridgewater, quarterback, a three-year varsity starter for football, a four-year varsity starter for baseball, and uh, kind of a legendary player at, at Bridgewater. Well, that does it. Bridgewater 49, 100 in Central 14. Red Devils fall to 0-2 with Phillipsburg next week. Bridgewater goes to 2-0. They've got Ridge here at Basilone Field a week from today. That'll just about wrap it up here for my partner, Jim Johnson. I'm Jimmy Sullivan. Thank you so much for watching here on HCTV. We'll catch you next time.